Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. I'm here today with the 24th episode of WeeklyPokerHand.com, where today I'm going to be going over a hand I played at a high-stakes online tournament. As you can see, a player in middle position with 100 big blinds opened to 300. Lord T-Bird on the button, who I know to be a fairly weak player, likes to call, and I'm in the small blind with pocket jacks with also uh, 90 big blinds. So this is a spot where I think you have a few options. You could either call which I don't really think is ever a bad play out of position. You could re-raise to something like 1,000 to try to get two callers, and then hopefully you can bet and pick it up on the flop. Or you can raise a little bit larger to something like 1,500 and try to get one caller and then play a pot heads up. And if you do make it 1,500 here and uh, ply the initial opener re-raises, you can be fairly confident you have the worst hand and can make a pretty easy fold, um, just because you don't you really don't want to go broke early in a tournament like this. If you re-raise smaller to like a thousand, you'll still need to fold to the three bet, or the four bet, but you have to realize then that you're actually sort of inducing your opponent to bluff because he's going to look at your rate, your smallish raise and think you're just trying to pick it up some percentage of the time, and that's not necessarily what you want. So because of that, I think you're better off just going ahead and figuring out where you're at and making a larger re-raise. And whenever you re-raise, you always need to be careful that you're not doing it purely for information because a lot of the time your opponent is g are going to give you incorrect information. Like say I make it 1600 here and the guy just jams all in. It's a terrible spot and I have to fold, but he could be doing it with like 9-7 suited because he thinks I have something like ace-queen or pocket nines and th he thinks he can push me off of it. So you always have to be careful and know what your opponents are capable of. And I do, need Lord I do also know Lord T-Bird to be a weaker player, so I think he may call if I 3-bet large even if it doesn't really make much sense. So that is what I do. I make it 1600 here, and sure enough, Lord T-Bird does call. And we flop pretty much the nuts. Uh, we flop top set. Notice Lord T-Bird here has 3,900 chips behind, and there is currently 3,700 chips in the pot. So he has basically a pot size bet left. And this is a spot where I think a lot of players really mess up when they have pocket jacks in this spot. A lot of players think, well, I don't want to get outdrawn. But what you have to realize is that what's really going to outdraw you besides exactly two diamonds? And of course, he could have two diamonds, but that's like the only hand that has any equity whatsoever against you. So the only hands that have equity are suited hands that are diamonds. That's just going to be like one in eight times or something. He's going to have a flush draw. And then when he does have a flush draw, it's not like he has a lock or anything. You know, he's, he has like 40% equity, or probably less, like 35 to 30% equity. So in this spot, we either have him completely drawing dead, or we have him to like 30% equity. So either way, it's a great spot. And this is one of these situations where I do think slow playing is correct. And I don't really slow play that often, as you guys know from watching the first 23 weeks of WeeklyPokerHand.com. And if you have not watched them, I definitely suggest you go back and watch them. They're all free. You can get them very easily. Check them out. It's a very good learning tool. Um, but right here, I think it's a great spot to check because your opponent's is drawing stone dead, and you really want to do everything in your power to let him catch up. And the cool part about this is that you don't really need to bet to get the rest of his stack in the pot. If one more bet goes in, you're going to be able to get it all in. So right here, you don't need to bet to try to build a pot. If if we check here and he checks behind, my plan is going to be usually to check the turn, and then if he checks behind again on the river, I'm going to shove because then you know I want to try to get a stack. So. I do check the flop, and unfortunately he does check behind. Turns a queen, which is effectively a blank again, but this is actually a very good card for me, because now if he has king-queen, ace-queen, queen-10, queen, anything like that, he's almost certainly going to get his money in. We may lose a little bit of value if he has something like pocket sevens, but um, that's really the only hands we're going to be missing value from are the smaller pairs, and he probably doesn't even have that. So I'm just going to check here again and hope he puts some money in. And here he bets 2100 which, you know, it's kind of gross because at this point I don't really want to check call because if he has air, he probably isn't going to bluff the river. If he has something like 10-9, I definitely want to get it all in here. So I don't really want to call and then have him check it back when he misses. Um, I don't think he's, I guess right here, whenever I, if I call, I don't think he's ever going to bluff the river because he should be able to look at this and realize that there is you know, 8,000 chips in the pot, and I only have to put in 1,700 more. You know, I'm never, ever folding. So because of that, I do think that right here we need to go ahead and go all in. And it's kind of gross, though, because if he has, like, stone air, like, say he does have ace-nine, he's just going to fold. But 
I think this is probably the best play, and I think most likely we're going to be shown some sort of value hand here, and I don't, I don't think he's going to be bluffing too often. So I do go all in, and he actually calls with ace-10 suited, and I, of course, do not think this is a great play. And you know what happens on poker stars when you get it all in. The river is the, oh, the four. So we win, and I think that's a pretty good spot where a lot of players would just blindly bet every flop. And whenever you bet this flop, notice if we go back to the jack-3-2, if he's sitting here with ace-10 of clubs, he's probably going to fold. And we're, we'd miss out on getting it all in with almost 100% equity. So I guess that's what you should take away from this video. Whenever you have the stone lock, don't throw the equity away. Um, in the next part of this episode, uh, in part two, I'm going to be checking out how my opponent played his hand and what I think he could have he done differently. And as you will see, it's going to be quite a bit. So check it out at weeklypokerhand.com. Check out part two. And also, if you have not yet, I definitely suggest you go to floattheturn.com and get involved in the forums. There we have quite a bit of discussion about all sorts of for all different forms of poker, like cash games, sit and goes, multi-table tournaments, and other games like Omaha 8 or better, and heads up, stuff like that. So go there and discuss poker. It's uh, probably the best way to learn to play is by talking to other players. And I've set up a form that's absolutely free for everyone to go check out. So floattheturn.com is where you can find that. This has been Jonathan Little for weeklypokerhand.com. Thanks for watching.